Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a question from Leak Code called the minimum number of arrows to burst balloons. This is part of Leak Code 75 and is a pretty fun question. So what are we given? There are some spherical balloons tapped to a flat wall that represents the XY plane. The balloons are represented as a 2D integer array points where points of I goes from X of start to X of end. And it denotes a balloon whose horizontal diameter stretches between X of start to X of end. And you don't know the exact Y coordinates of the balloons. And we're going to see it's really not going to be relevant. And that's because arrows can be shot up directly vertically in the positive Y direction from different points along the X axis. A balloon with X start and X end is burst by an arrow shot at X if that X falls between X start and end inclusive. There is no limit to the number of arrows that can be shot and a shot arrow keeps traveling up infinitely bursting any balloons in its path. Given an array points, return the minimum number of arrows that must be shot to burst all balloons. Okay, this is confusing right now. We're gonna visualize it and it's gonna become much clearer after that. So example one, we have the following points. These are diameters of balloons. And if we were to draw out what that would look like in the XY plane, we have a diameter going from one to six for a balloon. Then we have two to eight. We have 10 to 16 and we have seven to 12. So these are our balloons and we're going to shoot arrows up on these points. So anything shot in that point going down vertically will get all the balloons that cross that Y axis. So over here, we only need two arrows to burst all four balloons. We're going to shoot one at X equals six. So shooting one here, will get this balloon and this balloon and shooting one at X equals 11. We'll get this one and this one. And there are actually multiple ways to solve this. We could have also shot an arrow at 12 that would have still gotten both of these balloons. Now, example two, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So given the following diameters, we see that there are no overlaps here. So we're going to need individual arrows for every single balloon. So since we have four balloons that don't really overlap with each other, we need four arrows in order to burst all four. And finally, example three, one, two, two, three, three, four, and four, five. Here, we only need two arrows to burst balloons. We can shoot one arrow at two over here. So it's going to take care of this balloon and this one right here. And we're going to shoot another arrow at four because it takes care of three to four and four to five over here. So we're given diameters of various balloons and we want to figure out the minimum number of arrows needed to pop all balloons. At this point, pause the video and see if you can think about this yourself. I'm going to give you a hint. It has something to do with the endpoints of the diameters. So give that a shot yourself first. All right, moving forward, I'm assuming you've tried it out, but what we want to do is sort all of our balloons by the end point. So if I have example one over here, I have 10, 16, 2, 8, 1, 6, and 7, 12. I'm going to sort this in earliest end point for the diameters. So first I'm going to have 1, 6, then I'm going to have 2, 8, then I'm going to have 7, 12, and finally I'm going to have 10, 16. They're sorted by earliest end points. Now, what I want to do is pop a balloon at this endpoint right over here. Why? What is that going to do, right? This allows us to maximize all the balloons we can pop by an arrow shot. Because if I shoot at six, I'm covering any and all balloons that have a starting point that goes up until six. And of course, right now, you know, if I shot at four, I would have also gotten this balloon. But say I had another balloon that started at five and ended at 16. If I were to shoot at four, I would have missed this balloon that I could have burst had I shot at six. So I wanna take the furthest point and shoot there. That way I'm ensuring I'm getting all balloons that start up until six. I wanna go furthest out and make sure I can get all balloons before that. Now you might be wondering, what if a balloon has a diameter going from three to five? Wouldn't I be missing that balloon if I shot at six? Well, we're never going to have a balloon that's going from three to five, because remember, these are sorted by earliest endpoints. If that was the case, we would be considering this balloon first and shooting at the endpoint for this balloon. We're never going to have this because we know this is the earliest endpoint. So any balloon that starts before here has to end at least where we are or further. So all we really need to do is first sort our balloons. So I'm going to do points dot sort and I'm passing in a key being lambda x, where x is going to be what we have in that first index. So instead of sorting by index here, we're sorting by the endpoints over here. So now my points are sorted by their end times. Now, what I want to do is mark my first popping point. So pop is going to equal points of zero of one, the zeroth index we have, and the first index of that zeroth index is going to be six. Six is going to be my popping point. And at this point, I've used one arrow. Now, what I want to do is iterate through the remaining balloons. So for start and end in points, the first start and end points are going to be these. It's going to be one and six. All I need to do is check if my start 
falls before my popping point. If it does, we know we don't need another balloon and we can use that same arrow that we're using for this pop point to pop that balloon as well. So right now, start is going to be one. It's going to fall before our pop point, which is six. We're using that same six over here from this same balloon. So we don't need another balloon in order to pop this. Then we move down and we go to our second start and end point. So start right now is two and two is less than our current pop point. So we know we'll also be able to burst this balloon. The balloon crosses the Y axis that we're going to shoot an arrow at. So moving down again, at this point, start is after where we ended. So our start right now is seven and we popped at six. So there's going to be no overlap for this balloon with this Y axis, which means we need another arrow. So if start is greater than the popping point, we need to increase the number of arrows we have by one. And we're going to assign a new popping point to be the end of that new diameter that we're using. So pop is now going to equal end. So at this point, our pop is going to be 12. We're going to pop right over here. And once we go back in our for loop, we're now at 10 and 16. And this if condition is not going to be true, right? 10 is less than our pop. It's not greater than it. So we don't need another arrow in order to pop this balloon. If we were to pop at 12, we'd also be including this balloon. And if we were to move down again, say we also wanted to include this extra balloon that we added. So we had five and 16. Again, our starting point is before where we're gonna pop and we know our endpoint is only going to be further out. So we have to cross that Y axis at 12. And again, we don't need another arrow in order to do so. And once we go through this entire for loop, we now know the number of arrows that were used. So we just need to return the number of arrows that were used and that is it. So let's go ahead and submit this. And it is accepted. Now talking about space and time complexity. For space, all we're doing is just looping through with start and end point. So that's two variables. It has nothing to do with how big our input gets. So this is going to be constant O of one. And for time, we are sorting. So that is an n log n operation if we have n elements in our input points. After that, we loop through another n time. So overall, n log n plus n becomes an O of n log n operation. So it's going to be n log n for time. Now, before leaving, if you still want to see one quick example, stick around. We're going to do a quick run through just to make sure we're truly getting what is happening. Okay, say my input is the falling points array. The first thing I want to do is sort and it's going to be sorted at index one. So this is index zero. We're sorting by the endpoints. So this is what our new points array is going to look like. It's going to be one, two, three, four, four, five, and one, six. And so to visualize this, I'm also going to draw this out. One, two, three, four, four, five, and one, six. Now, next line, pop is going to be what we have at points of zero. And from there, what we have at index one. So it's going to be two. And we know we're going to use one arrow to do that. So pop is two and arrow is one. Now for start and end in points, so we're going to be iterating through our input array. Start right now is one and end is two. If start is greater than pop, is one greater than two? It's not. So we don't go in this if and we go back into this for loop. So now start is three and end is four. Again, we make the check start greater than pop. It is three is greater than two. So we know we need another arrow here. So arrow is going to move up to be two in total. So now we're going to pop at this location right over here. Again, we go back into this for loop. Now start is four and end is five. We make a check if start greater than pop. Is this true? Is four greater than four? It's not, right? It's not greater than it. So we don't go in this if condition and we go back in our loop. And this makes sense, right? If we were to shoot an arrow right over here, it's going to burst everything in that Y axis and it's going to get both of these balloons. So going back in this for loop, we now have start being one and end being six. Again, is start greater than pop? It's not, right? Start is one and pop is four. It's not greater than it, which means in this axis, we're also getting this balloon as well. And we don't need another arrow in order to pop more balloons. Now we go in this for loop and there are no more elements for us to go over. So all we do is return arrow, which is two, which means we only needed two arrows in order to pop all these balloons. So it was at point four right over here and point two right over here. So this is how we find the minimum number of arrows to burst balloons. If you have any questions with this problem whatsoever, of course, let me know down below. I will answer all of them. If this video was helpful, like, comment, share, and subscribe. It really supports the channel. And as always, I will see you in the next one.